Wolverine fights the Hulk in the 2005 story called Ultimate Wolverine vs. Hulk, which opens up to Logan lying in the snow with blood coming out of his face as he says that he can't feel one of his body parts. As in the very next panel, we see Hulk ripping him completely in half as we now know why he wasn't able to feel his legs. Logan does seem very surprised by this as he questions how that even happened in the first place and says that it's not supposed to and essentially says that he's not as unbreakable as he thought. He then starts to sniff out where his legs could potentially be. As initially he's surprised he could even do that and then realizes that Hulk had thrown his legs four miles from here. But not just four miles, but four miles up. As in the very next panel, we see him climbing up the scale of the mountain with just the upper half of his body and says to himself that they're not gonna go back themselves. And while he climbs the mountain on his own, we get thrown into a flashback where we see Nick Fury and Logan speaking within the shield building as Fury asks Logan if he likes the painting beside them called the Bosch and proceeds to offer him a cigar. Logan responds by asking Fury if they're gonna talk art and cigars or is he gonna tell him why he's really there. Fury then says that he forgot Logan didn't like small talk and Logan says small talk is for small people and that both of them are not small people. Fury asks him to tell him why he thinks he's here, which Logan says either he's in trouble or he needs him to do something nasty and says that whatever he wants him to do, he wants it off the shield grid. Then asks about the girl behind the painting, actually two girls, not one, and that he can smell their soap along with the Altoid one of them is sucking on. To which Nick Fury finally gives it up as they both walk through where the painting once was that turns out to be Betty Ross who becomes the Red She-Hulk in the future and Jennifer Walters who is the She-Hulk and Bruce Banner's cousin. Nick then explains that Betty takes care of the publicity at S.H.I.E.L.D. and Jennifer is one of the two big brains in their super soldier research and development. Logan then asks who the other big brain is to which we're brought to the lab where he's given a jar of literal Hulk crap and when he asks about why he's being shown this in the first place, Betty goes off on him and asks Fury if he's really gonna trust him and calls him an animal and proceeds to say that this is their problem and it needs to be resolved quietly and asks if Xavier won't get involved. Nick kindly tells her to shut up and then tells Logan that the reason he's showing him the jar is because they found it yesterday which Logan says that he thought they nuked the Hulk and Fury confirms that they did but he's a little tougher than they thought he would be. He then says that there have been a series of incidents that got their radar up from a bombing in Paris to a massive cattle massacre in Ireland and a quote-unquote earthquake in India with no activity on any actual fault lines and no aftershock. He says that these are not low profile events and that there's a certain inevitability of finding out what's causing them. Logan then asks what's causing them then and Fury says it's Banner. Betty says that Bruce had killed 800 people in New York City and was tried for mass murder and executed for it in a very public way which S.H.I.E.L.D. was responsible for. Fury then reveals to Logan that the reason he brought him to S.H.I.E.L.D. is that he wants him to find and kill the Hulk and asks him if he'll do it. And surprisingly, Logan agrees instantly. Fury then asks about not having to threaten him or giving him any incentive for him to take the job and Logan just says that Fury said he's tough and it'll be fun. Which Fury laughs out loud and instantly asks what he needs to get it done and Logan says all he needs is his scent and where he found what's in the jar. Which Fury tells him that they found it in Tibet and Jennifer will help him with the scent situation. Bringing us to the lab where Jennifer tells Logan that the reason why Hulk went on that rampage was purely because of his breakup with Betty Ross and said that he overreacted. Which Logan says overreacting is just yelling at a waiter when your steak isn't done right. But he killed 800 people. Which Jennifer says she guesses it's all relative. And after that conversation, she finally brings out the scent, which is the super soldier serum that runs through the Hulk's veins. And after Logan sniffs it, Jennifer tells him that Bruce is a very nice man and tells him to try to make his death quick. Which takes us to Tibet, four hours before Logan loses his legs, in which we see him at a bar asking for drinks. And as this happens, a person walks in and goes over to a man with a green hat and brings him out of the bar. And to end the issue off, we watch as Logan follows the man around all the way back to the mountain he was on at the beginning of the issue as he opens the door on the side of one of the pillars and sees the incredible Hulk surrounded by a bunch of half-naked women in a harem. And the moment Hulk sees him, Logan just says hi to Bruce as he pops out his claws, taking us straight to the third issue in the story since the second issue is just a lot of backstory about how we got here and really isn't that interesting and I know you guys just really want to get to the action as we're brought right where we left off with Wolverine arriving to the harem as the Hulk says that Logan seems surprised in which he responds by saying that a 20 foot monster surrounded by naked women in the middle of nowhere isn't that surprising in the slightest. Hulk then asks if Fury sent him and while Logan tries to dance around this question, Hulk says that if he had come here to kill him, the least he can do is show him the decency of not playing dumb. Logan responds by saying that if he had been sent to kill him, he wouldn't give a shit about decency. And after a little conversation about love and Hulk essentially seeking God and becoming one with himself, Logan then starts to push buttons by telling the Hulk that if he knows so much about love, then why does Betty Ross want him dead? Hulk then questions what he said and as Wolverine tries to push him further, Hulk tells him very aggressively to leave and then tells him to tell S.H.I.E.L.D. that he couldn't find Hulk. As Logan makes a joke about Hulk referring to himself 
himself in the third person. But it doesn't stop there, as Logan still pushes him even further and says that Hulk isn't so smart now that he's talking about his lady friend and that he's now losing his cool. Hulk tells Wolverine to leave again, even more aggressively than the first time, which Logan puts the final nail in the coffin by asking if he minds if he takes Betty out sometime, maybe dancing, since Hulk doesn't care about her anymore. And that is what finally breaks Hulk as he punches Wolverine straight through the doors and out of the mountain pillar. As we see in the very next panel, the fight finally beginning as Hulk just absolutely pummels Wolverine into the ground as we see the moment he rips him in half and throws his legs up towards the other side of the mountain. Which brings us to the point where we see Logan climb up the mountain to find his own leg. But when he gets there, he realizes that Hulk had got there first. And when he gets there, he asks Logan which leg he should eat first. But before anything can transpire from that question, they both look into the sky and see a figure come flying down from the sky and crash down into the ground with a huge thwack doom. And when the mist finally clears, they hear a voice telling them to break it up. And when Wolverine asks them who they are, we see the She-Hulk standing right in front of them, or so it seems, as she says that she's Plan B. Bringing us to the fourth issue in the story, which opens up to a flashback sequence of when Wolverine first started speaking to Fury back in the first issue. But this time in the perspective of the girls behind the painting to see exactly what was going on. Betty proceeds to question why Fury is trying to reason with Logan calling him an animal, as Jennifer tells her that if she had just kept it in her pants, Fury wouldn't have had to put a hit out on her ex-boyfriend. She then proceeds to ask Betty if she's able to take some of the serum Bruce injected himself with off premises just to experiment with. Betty then gets really riled up about it and asks Jennifer specifically why she wants the serum, which responds saying that she thinks she can make it work better. And when Betty asks her what she hopes to achieve by making a horribly failed experiment work better, she says that she plans on making it so that when a person takes the serum, they become all whole but have none of the rampage. But right before Betty could continue on and say Jennifer doesn't know anything about what she's talking about, we see the moment where Logan points points out that they're behind the painting and their cover being blown, which takes us to Forge as he watches Iron Man and Captain America going at it at ping pong. But while the game goes on, Betty interrupts and asks them why they didn't tell her that Fury had found Bruce. Tony then tells her because she didn't want to know, to which she responds that she did, and asks Steve if he's really okay with Fury sending Logan to kill Hulk, and asks him if he could go and bring him back alive. Tony then says that Steve isn't going anywhere and that Captain America doesn't get his hands dirty, and right after Tony vaporizes the ping pong ball, he gives it to Betty how he sees it and tells her that he isn't going to give her a whole lecture because she wouldn't understand it. And that's because she's normal and that she doesn't know how it feels like to wield tremendous power and tells her to just let Bruce get handled by people who do. Which brings us back to Jennifer as she has in her possession the Hulk serum she asked for from Betty. As we see her testing out a new form of it on a hamster. And as she waits for the serum to start working, Betty bursts through the door and asks her what she thinks she's doing. To which she responds that she's doing an experiment with Betty, instantly recognizing that she has Hulk serum in the syringe. And before she can ask any further questions about the modifications Jennifer made to it, the serum finally kicks in on the hamster as it grows and turns green just like the Hulk. And in the very next panel, we see Betty as she questions what Jennifer just did, as she reveals that she did exactly what she laid out to Betty when she asked her for the serum in the first place. As the hamster isn't aggressive whatsoever, like the Hulk is, and says that he's totally shredded and green, but chill, just like she said he would be. All of Hulk, but none of the rampage. And after that happens, we see a day later Betty going to the shooting range to find Nick Fury as she straight up tells him that Jennifer. Jennifer is a traitor and he immediately says that's impossible and says that she's too hot and bothered about gene splicing to even consider betraying them. Which Betty asks then why is she shopping super soldier serum? Fury then tries to play it off by saying what she said is a tongue twister to which she informs Fury that Jennifer is planning to sell the Hulk serum to the Chinese. And when Fury questions this, she says that since Fury doesn't see fit to monitor her, she hacked into her laptop and took a look at her encrypted emails as she's apparently setting up a drop for tomorrow night. Fury asks where to which she says that she doesn't know, but suggests a plan which sees him authorizing Betty to let Jennifer take the serum and following her right to the bye and catch her red-handed. Which Fury agrees to Betty's plan and tells her to give Jennifer the serum in order to stop her. Which brings us to the actual operation as we see one of the operators telling Fury that Jennifer's made contact with the Chinese and are prepared to move on his command. Which they do in the next following panels as we see him drop down from the sky and take her down. And when she questions the reason behind this, Fury tells her that what he's doing is stopping an act of treason and says that he supposes she has a perfectly good explanation for selling their serum or a briefcase full of Star Trek? Yeah, well, after this realization, she explains that it's a new movie and that she paid 10 grand for it. And when Fury realizes that she's not selling the serum, Jennifer says that Betty won't even give her access to it since she fixed it. And the moment he realizes what's going on, he instantly calls for Betty and lets Jennifer go. Which brings us to Betty Ross herself, as we see her on an aircraft getting ready to deploy in Tibet, as she injects herself with the Hulk serum. And right as she does so, Fury tells his men to take her down and restrain her. But before they can even do anything, she starts trying
transforming into the She-Hulk with of course none of the rampage as we see the entire transformation process in the next few panels. She then takes one of the guards' comms and tells Nick that she has a message for Tony and tells him to tell Tony that she now has an idea of what it's like to wield tremendous power. And after he tells his men to take her down, she manages to absorb all the gunfire and leaps out of the aircraft, bringing us back to where we left off in the last issue as she lands right in front of Hulk and Logan as Hulk recognizes her as Betty and asks her why she came. And she tells him that she came to rescue him. Hulk then asks her if it looks like he needs to be rescued as Wolverine tells her that he only talks like a caveman when she's involved so she might want to skedaddle. And to end the issue off, Hulk says that Betty broke his heart so now he has to break her. Bringing us to the fifth issue which opens up to Logan standing completely naked in an open field looking absolutely confused. And to add to his confusion, a talking panda approaches him and greets him asking how he's doing. Logan confused as ever, just brushes this off and is convinced that this isn't really happening. Which the panda confirms his suspicions and says that he is in fact dreaming but says that it doesn't mean that it isn't happening. Logan then says that he understands it now and says that the panda is his cuddly inner self that never comes out on the account of him never getting enough hug. And the panda responds by saying that he's not cuddly in the slightest. And Logan then does what he does best which is pissing people off as he tells the panda that he is and doesn't take it back when the panda tells him to. So to get into an all out brawl as during the fight the panda takes the opportunity to tell Logan some vital information that he's gonna want to know for the future as he tells him that the shield situation is between him and Banner now and says that it's now become personal between them both but warns him that whatever he does not to tell them what he heard Hulk say to Betty and when Logan asks to tell who the panda says the people who cut his head off and the moment he says that Logan instantly wakes up and when he awakens he's met with Nick Fury in the same room as him Nick tells him that he's in the Triskelion prison compound and tells him that shield brought him here and ran some tests on his head while he was asleep Logan then asks him how he knew he wouldn't die if he cut his head off and Nick just tells him because they know everything about him and reveals to Logan that his lungs are seven floors above them and the only way he's breathing right now is through his skin and even says that while he was asleep they put his head in a room with no oxygen at all and he still didn't die which got him thinking that maybe Logan's mutation isn't about healing at all but more about surviving. Fury then reveals to Logan that he will in fact stick his head back on his body and when Logan asks about the catch Fury reveals that the only way he'll reunite him with his other half is by telling him what happened in Tibet and that's exactly what Logan does as he explains that he found Banner and they got into a big fight and then everything went black after he ripped his body in half and now he's here in the prison. Fury then asks if he's sure he's not leaving out the good parts of the story and Fury tells him that they know Betty was there and jumped out of a jet to arrive at their location after she used a highly experimental serum on herself. Logan plays this off by saying that everything went black and he knows nothing of the story and Fury says that they have reason to believe Betty engaged on Banner and that there was seismic activity in the Himalayas 8.9 on the Richter scale and asks Logan if any of this is ringing a bell. Wolverine then says that maybe he would have if Fury hadn't dropped a bomb on him and Nick catches him in this lie and says that if everything went black how does he remember him dropping the bomb and Logan says he guesses he woke up for that part. Fury then becomes completely fed up with Logan at this point and just straight up tells him that he needs to know what they said to each other before the nuke was dropped. Wolverine abiding by the panda's warnings tells Fury who cares what they said since he blew them up and Fury says that he blew Logan up but he's not gone and then asks him if he's protecting Hulk for some insane reason. Logan says no which prompts Fury to ask him the same question again which Logan again persists saying that he doesn't know and that everything went black and after he says this Fury pulls out his gun and points it directly at Logan's head which causes Logan to finally give it up and tell him what happened which brings us back to another flashback sequence which funnily enough the comic recognizes but pretty much we see the quote-unquote fight between both Hulks go down and Logan essentially saying that right before Fury fired the nuke at them he saw Hulk smile at her and then immediately jumped at the rocket and before he came in contact with it she told him that she still loves him and then the comic basically wastes her time by not showing what he said to her as it seems like Wolverine still stuck to the panda's wishes and didn't tell Fury what he said. But right after this flashback ends, Logan wakes up in a prison cell with his head attached back to his body, but his hands are covered by restrainers put on him by shield as this stops him from escaping for obvious reasons. But while he contemplates how he got there in the first place, he sniffs that there's someone in his toilet and it turns out to be Forge as he tells Logan that he's just trying to escape and tells him that he designed a tuning fork that vibrates his molecules fast enough to phase. And when Logan asks him to help him out too, Forge says why the hell would he want to? And Logan says because he'd consider it a personal favor. And when they both finally escape the prison, Logan tells Forge that he's gonna need him to build something he needs. And when Forge asks him what in specific he needs, we're brought over to Forge's personal lab, where we see Logan essentially asking Forge to build him a collar that he's gonna use on both the Hulks that's impossible to take off since he made it to withstand 81 billion tons of pressure. So for as strong as Hulk is, he won't be able to pull this off. Forge then asks him if he wants him to increase the diameter of the collar since he'll be dealing with a bigger guy, which he declines as we find out why in a bit. Forge then asks Logan where he's going anyway.
away. And this is where we finally see what Hulk said to Betty as it's revealed that he told her to meet him in Casablanca as that's where Logan's off to next. And to end the issue off, we see Nick Fury spying on Forge and Logan's entire conversation as he catches the very moment Logan says that he's off to Casablanca to find the Hulk. Bringing us to the sixth and final issue in the story as we're met with Betty Ross coming out of the shower and dropping her towel in surprise that Logan literally broke into her hotel room. Logan then tells her that there's a necklace on the nightstand and to put it on. And when she approaches it and realizes that it's not a necklace, she questions it. But Logan insists to her that it is a necklace and tells her to still put it on. And when she says or what, he says or he'll kill her boyfriend. Betty then says that if Logan knew where Bruce was, he wouldn't be here threatening her. Which Logan shuts that down and tells her that he's taking a flight to Casablanca from Vietnam. And says that it was smart for them to split up after Tibet since Fury will be looking for them to be traveling together. And after a little conversation about how he found her and Betty calling Logan jealous of Bruce because he found peace, she stops trying to reason with him and hulks up and attacks Logan by throwing him throughout the building, breaking through walls trying to kill him, and actually sticks her thumb into Logan's eye, telling him that he shouldn't have come here. And Logan responds instantly by saying that she shouldn't have let him get this close. As in the very next panel, he pops out his claws into her stomach and tells her that the first claw punctured her spleen making it bleed but she'll live, and the third claw is sticking into her kidney. But good thing she has two, but if he ever pops the middle claw, it'll go right through her liver and she'll die. He tells her that he let her live and that she's gonna turn back to normal, put on the collar, and on his way out, he'll call an ambulance for her. And to end this confrontation off, he tells Betty on his way out that she should have stayed out of this and that he doesn't like hurting girls. And as she begs for Bruce's life and tells Logan not to kill him since she still loves him, Logan, not missing a beat, just says too bad and leaves her to her wound. Bringing us back to the present day where we're brought to the very flight that Bruce Banner is on to Casablanca, as we see Logan trying to sneak the collar onto him by acting as flight crew, which ultimately works as he actually manages to get it on him without much difficulty unlike with Betty. Bruce then realizes what the collar is about as he figures out that if he changes into the Hulk, the collar will choke him to death. With Logan saying that's the idea, which is why he told Forge not to increase the diameter of the collars. Bruce then asks why he doesn't just stick his claws into his brain and be done with it. And Logan says because he doesn't have any problems with Bruce. It's Hulk who he has an issue with. As he says he wants Bruce to die as him. He wants the one who ripped him in half and would have eaten his leg if he didn't have a bomb land on his face. Bruce then tells Logan that he won't change and that he can control it now and asks him why he's doing this in the first place and that he's a good person. He doesn't deserve this. Logan responds by saying that he himself is a bad person and deserve ain't got nothing to do with anything. Bruce then tells Logan that he doesn't believe he's a bad person and that he can prove it if he has to and says that he's gonna have to ask him to remove the collar from his neck and before Logan can even finish his sentence, Bruce gets up from his seat, opens the plane door and jumps out of it sending him flying out and of course Logan moves over to the plane door and jumps out along with them and actually manages to catch up with them and asks him what the hell is even doing and tells him to change. Bruce tells him to take up the collar so he can but Logan doesn't want to since he wouldn't be able to kill the Hulk and after some back and forth dialogue between them Bruce finally gives him the choice of either saving Hulk or killing Bruce and in the end we see as Wolverine makes the ultimate decision of removing the collar from his neck so he can change and save himself bringing us to the end of the story as we see Hulk and Wolverine smashing to the ground as we see Fury somehow at the exact location they fell from the plane and welcomes them back to earth and when the dust clears we see Hulk holding Wolverine in his arms as he saved them from the impact from the fall Logan then asks Fury where his backup is, to which he responds by saying that he came alone and has no intention of hurting either of them. Hulk then enters the conversation and asks Fury what he wants with them, and Fury just tells him that he wants to tell him that he can go and live his life and be free. But thanks to Wolverine, they have in Shield's custody the one thing he cares about, which is Betty, and he rubs it in his face even further, which angers Hulk as he tells him that Betty's locked up far, far away and is undergoing many tests. And if Bruce ever wants to stop hiding and come back to work for him, he could see fit to make sure that they stick him in the cell door next to her so they can at least be together. And after he says this, Hulk grabs Fury by the neck and asks him how stupid does he think he is and says that he'll never work for him again. Fury then says Hulk probably not but Banner will. To which Hulk says that Banner and Hulk are the same and Fury shuts us down instantly and says that they're definitely not the same but they can talk amongst themselves about that one and that he knows where to find him once he decides. And when he says this, Hulk puts him down leaving him be but before he leaves he speaks to Logan one last time and says that he lied to him which puts him on his shit list and that he doesn't want to be on it. To which Logan says he's a mutant, he's on everyone's shit list. And to end the issue and the story off, we see Nick get back on his horse that he came with and leaves by saying he's sure they'll be seeing each other soon. As we see Hulk and Wolverine making up in the end as he walk back to the city with everything pretty much behind them with Logan still saying that he's still pissed Hulk ripped him in half. So this brings us to the end of the story which also means the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope you enjoyed the story as this was actually referenced in the new Deadpool movie and I really want to get this out for you guys because this is honestly such a cool story and for those of you that didn't know anything about the story, now you do. But in the meantime, hit the subscribe button if you haven't
subscribed and ready as I post videos just like this one every single week. So click the notification bell to keep up with my weekly uploads. Cause it helps me out a lot. Click on the bass symbol to check out my last week's video and click on the video to arrive that to check out the video I think you like my channel. Cause if you like this one, you'll definitely like that video. Hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll see you all next week with another video. Peace.